G'day guys, a quick preview of Ram Week for Anzac Day, 25th of April, Wednesday the 25th of April. Uh, rail goes 9 metres from the 1600 metres to the winning post, 7 metres for the remainder. So mostly uh, we've got a 9 metre rail. Uh, what have we got? Irrigation 11 mils last 7 days, 1.6 mils of rainfall last 7 days. Looks like... Um, the tracks had a bit of wear, but obviously that track was super fast the other day. I doubt they did too much damage to it. Still should be playing on speedish. Um, obviously, for some decent sized fields here with a bit of tempo and a couple of them. So, making ground, but again, don't really want to be back wide and making ground more important to be uh, closer to the fence, I would imagine. Uh, maybe one or two off in the straight again uh, could be the play, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. That's what we're setting up for. First race of the day uh, for the three-year-olds, set weights maiden. Looks a bit of potential speed here with Sazavi trying to hold the front all too free up there a little bit. African Academy gets the blinkers back on. And I'm hoping that Stock Up goes forward with Sazavi here from the, the gate outside it. And they can try and control things. I do think that they're the two horses to run down. Uh, Sazavi on the seven day backup obviously loses uh, the senior rider, but was three wide no cover there last start and really improved. Looks to lead, hopefully, Stock Up, who looks quite one paced, uh, is suited by the extra hundred metres, but obviously needs a more aggressive ride. Really should have won last start and just restrained out of the race early, cost at the race. Uh, Strike Rock's the one that looks suited also up to 1400 metres. Draws that inside gate again, had its chance last start and was a bit one pace, but probably the extra 200 metres could help uh, others in the betting all too free. 23 days since that first up run where it was a bit weak late. Uh, don't think it looks to control the tempo here. Uh, I think they'll be happy to take a sit and uh, may end up outside leader, which is not ideal anyway. Uh, can't really find it. And Stone's the other one who does look to be working towards a win but this does look tougher if anything than last start and looks to give them a start from gate seven or possibly the other one who could roll forward and sit outside the leader but I don't think that's an ideal spot for it either so stock up from Sazavi for me in the first uh, in not too exciting a race race two one of the better two year old Colts and Geldings maidens we've seen for a while this uh, this horse Danawee is worth having a quick look at its trial. Only the one trial, 1,000 metre trial. See what he does here. Uh, we had our, our mounting yard guy there for the, for the trial meeting and, and this was his pick of the day. He picked it out as an exceptional type. See he misses the start here and he's hunted along quite a bit. Picks up the bridle nice and quickly and, and charges through to lead. Uh, you can see how green he is here, does a lot wrong. Gets to the middle of the track and looks to be doing all this on raw ability. Very talented type that, that um, extremely dangerous here, there's no doubt about that. He's, he looks very raw but full of ability. He ran time in that trial. Uh, uh, beat a clump of horses, but uh, it's hard to put, put your finger on him. He's drawn eight. He doesn't want to miss the start, but at least drawn eight, he's got a chance to recover if he does. Can't see him racing anywhere but on speed and, and giving them something to chase. 1,200 metres first start in a race. Off 1,000 metre trial is dangerous, so he's priced to be very good. I think he is very good. He's been well backed early. It's just a matter of whether he can put it all together on race day and, and do it all right, because there are other talented horses uh, in this event, so... Uh, Danawee's certainly the well, one of the main query runners in the race. The other horse I did like the trials of was the Autumn Sun. Uh, had the preparation before Christmas. Came back and looks an improved type here. Really strong type. Loved the look of him. Uh, he's a reduced choice cult. And gets the lugging bit for the first time here. I think it's the closer. I think there is a bit of speed here. And I do think I do have a lot of time for this horse, Autumn Sun. Uh, the two horses, other horses from the Wally Yard, blinkers off or seen, trialling up really nicely, had some good solid form lines before the break, and Pembroke Castle, very similar, very similar, hard to split these two horses, uh, very similar lead-ups to trials, both trialling well, but uh, the only thing is that Orsine draws a little bit wider here, 
and uh, uh, difference in rider, but uh, they they both look to have solid chances. Exclusive is the horse, another horse we found at the trials uh, that we're just hoping the blinkers would go on. They go on straight away off the trials. So first race start, the blinkers go on, and this horse can run a race at big odds. Draws nicely. Twenty five to one looks uh, well and truly. Good enough value. I think even more importantly, the six dollars the place uh, because I do think there are some talented types here, and I'd much rather be sort of a peanut the win and, and a decent bet the place on exclusive. So I think it's between Danaway and the Autumn Sun, uh, the Pembroke Castle, and Orsina, a dangerous horde of horses. Exclusive the value runner. Race two. Race three. Tough race to work out, it's sort of a process of deduction. There's some first starters here that run the trial fair, and then the, the one that down the bottom in separated is trialed really well. Press boxes trialed well, and wind spears trialed very fast, also with the blinkers on first. Starting a race here, drawn the inside gate. I do think separated, who was with the Waterhouse Yard until recently, uh, debuting for John O'Shea here, is uh, the horse to beat. Draws ideally. Really think it lobs right there, just uh, right on the speed from that good draw, and is the horse to beat, as you were saying. There is good tempo from wide here, and I like it easy. Uh, speed bo uh, but Press box did show a bit of speed in trials, but probably settles off them here, and, and wind speed definitely kicks up from the inside. Uh, Columbina draws awkwardly. It's uh, well and truly in the betting, favourite early. Thought it had every possible chance last start. Uh, Iwazi, Iwazi has the winkers on. The second trial was only quite fair. Going off that, you'd have to really risk it, but Snowden trials are often hard to get a really good gauge on, and the stable mate Galena drawn awkwardly, also trialling okay. Both of them look to need a little bit of luck in the run, so sort of Columbina, Iwazi, and Galena all drawn in 8, 9, 10. Not sure where they end up, whereas... Uh, Separated should lob right on the bunny and chasing that this off wind spear I think uh, Should look the winner at some stage um, And it's a matter of whether they can run it down separated for me in race three uh, Race four uh, Interesting here that we've got hysterical going 1200-1200 straight to the mile. Uh, I don't mind that setup It's it's I don't mind that there's not much difference between a 12-12-14 for me Especially if they've had a bit of pressure in the run uh, last start, it did look the winner there for a few strides before Resin, who was uh, in the perfect trailing spot, rounded it up. Looks suited out to the mile, especially with this soft lead that looks uh, very, very likely. Uh, the one to run down, uh, Marikita's got to run the mile. Jaunty first up, 95 days, no trial. Very interesting horse. Um, sorry, the wrong race at the top. Uh, Cambage, 25 days between runs, plus 200 metres, certainly an advantage, better than it's been showing, draws really awkwardly, which is a danger, a nightmare, but um, certainly a value runner. Celtic Love was, was flying before it's had now a 39-day break. Uh, fitness levels are the key at the mile, because it does look about as far as that horse wants to go. Hartlings gets the blinkers, plus 200 metres, can't have it. Velocitia, Velocita is the early short price favourite. Obviously, Savakul's come out and run well in Melbourne and won. Uh, this horse beat Savakul home for it last time, but certainly every possible chance there. And it does look to likely to get the similar sort of run here midfieldish, maybe a little bit further back than it was last time, but uh, does have the ability to go right on with it. Obviously, pretty quirky horse uh, walks around the parade yard with a funny leg condition where it's got tight, uh, tight muscles or something and it throws a leg out. It's pretty crazy to have a look at, but... This horse has plenty of ability, has a nice turn of foot. Uh, if it's going to be vulnerable, it might be this run second up off a pretty nice effort first up, but uh, certainly deserves to be in the betting and deserves to be favourite. Ardanza has ability, open to improvement, draws nicely, uh, no real knock on it. Lifeline Princess is set up okay for this uh, form, not terrible I didn't think, and, and looks a knockout hope. Personal really needs to lift. Grata Prince is going well and uh, found the right race last time. Should race on speed. Perfect draw and should run well. And Akiko Gold's a bit of a, a place chance as well. I think it can 
throughout a storm of very similar horses should camp right in behind the speed here and can run cheeky races at odds. Both of them down the bottom are definitely going exotics. Uh, Cambage, Curata Princess and Akiko Gold, the value. Hysterical, the one to run down. Velocita, Veloster. Yeah, certainly the horse to beat, as in should be favourite, but well and truly found uh, in the market for me at $2.30. I can't be taking that price. Race 5. Speed from white here, as you can see, uh, Bellavino, Misery debuts for the Bjorn Baker stable, showed speed in the trial. Rose of Man's been showing more speed lately than it ever has in its life and can get over racing, so he could play a part in the on-speed battle. Fabry is racing really well, back to the 1,000, uh, getting deeper into its preparation. I don't think super ideal, but he's, he's racing too well to dismiss him and should be in a positive position. Uh, Bellavino certainly can run a race at odds here at around the $15 mark. Uh, can't knock it. Fabry, similar, about the $13 mark, should be on speed and can't knock it. Misery... Also around the nine dollar mark uh, on speed and and can run well first up for the new stable. Bjorn Baker seems to get these horses going straight away usually when he gets hold of them and loves to have them ready to go. So I think Misery is probably the one to beat out of those three. Uh, they all run well. Malahat uh, with the blinkers off and being a gelding has been trolling up okay. I'm not sure where he gets to here. Whether he gets a pair too far back to be really dangerous. I think he's a uh, Certainly deserves to be around the favourite mark, but does need luck and does need to jump cleanly to find a, a pretty positive position. The bottom one, a Bukir Bay, uh, is coming off an average maiden where it was pretty dominant there, a short price favourite. Probably needs to lift. These are pretty tough uh, seasoned gallopers, and this horse is coming straight into it off a maiden win, so probably against it, but not surprised if it wins, but just have to be against it. And, and Quantrill. Uh, it's probably too short for it, 1,000 metres first up, but does get the blinkers back on. Uh, good sign. It's only 63 done at right day since it was last seen and has trialled positively. So, Quite an open race. Uh, misery for me uh, on top of the other two on paces. Um, Bellavino and Fabri. Malahat. I can just see it needing a bit of luck at the right time to justify its price. This next race I'm not going to spend too much time on. Only too much to say that it just looks an absolute lottery. Extremely difficult race. We've got uh, etymology coming off a of Maruya run where to build its confidence. Comes back to the city racing well, draws well. Let's just move it to the race. Caravali, 32 days back in distance, back in grade. Uh, definitely has the ability, but not an ideal setup. Drocade, 35 days between runs, up in distance, has trialled well since winning at Gosford. Uh, looks to have really solid ability and, and a good chance here each way. Ghostland, uh, an exploit Williams horse, is now gone to the Kim War stable and trialled up very well on two occasions. 1,800 metres first up, obviously. 217 days, so it's 319 days since it was last seen Ghostland too, which is obviously makes the job a little bit more difficult to get it race fit, especially for this distance range. A Raja, 217 days between runs, just one trial. I thought it went really well there. I'm very interested in this horse. I reckon if there's money for it, it's a very dangerous proposition. Um, perfect rhyme. The other one who's the big class drop was ridden poorly last start, dragged out of the race and can improve significantly. Dubai style well set up, just a very awkward draw. Not sure where it gets to. And the bottom one's not hopeless here. Plot twist for me. First up, 1800 suits this horse and $71 looks excessive for a horse of its ability. So... Really tough race. If I had to have a crack, it's probably perfect rhyme. Um, hoping the Rachel King's fairly aggressive on it, but this race is impossible. Race 7, a nice horse here. Well, a couple of nice horses resume, but I think this is a genuine group horse in Cradle Mountains. Trail like it with intent. Trial enormous. Draws to uh, do whatever it wants. Lead, sit off it, just, uh, just behind the speed if it wants to. No knock at all on Cradle Mountain. Clearly the horse to beat even at 1,200 metres fresh. Beacon has never run at 1,200 metres fresh, but also trolling up well. 172 days since last seen and can run well. Uh, who else have we got here? Smart Edge is a talented horse from the right stable, drawn ideally to camp just behind the speed as well. And it should run 
well it's the each way chance if you're having a bet straight out for me it's cradle mountain if you're having a bet each way it's uh smart edge at the price can't really find any knockouts here I, i'm interested to throw sugar bay leonard into exotics with the blinkers on um, maybe dwarf stars a closer also so spirited's a good horse with uh and, and our mahaha down the bottom of the wild card uh, it did look a pretty smart horse early in its last prep before tapering off a bit so it can bounce back Lucky last. Oh, this is a tough, tough race. Chapelko probably rolls forward. Uh, got the wrong race here. Chapelko probably runs, rolls forward and tries to take it up, but it just set a suicidal tempo last start and stuck on well. Grand finalist was taken on in front as well, also last start and should get on pace easily enough. Bright future box seats. A little bit. Like it turned it up last start for mine. Um, certainly had its chance to run on there with that suicidal tempo and, and just peaked late whether it needed that run. And today's its grand final, I'm not sure, but it, uh, it should run well. Pure Rebel ran well in that race first up. Uh, obviously pace assisted there, but can strip fitter, so I don't want to knock it too much. Uh, brother in arms, if it felt like it could certainly measure up to this grade as could Magical Stance, General Artie. Uh, is racing very well in, in country provincial grade and can measure up in what looks a tricky race. Centro Superior is impossible to follow, but also can measure up. Tough race to finish. Uh, Chapelko is the one to run down. Uh, if it sort of settles in an even tempo, it's certainly going to kick and, and be hard to beat. Grand finalist probably camps on it. If it leads, it's probably harder to beat with the blinkers applied. Uh, just still a little bit disappointing there the other day for mine. The closers come from everywhere. If those two don't control the speed and, and kick away, anything can win. General Artie, brother in arms, magical stance. Look, the value runners are big odds. There you go, not an easy day. Um, some nice horses resuming. Race, race two is the highlight for me, the clash between Danawi and the Autumn Sun. Uh, but all in all, a pretty interesting day. Separated, I can't, uh, is another interesting horse. Debuting in race three, and it sort of seems to get tougher as the day goes on. But uh, we'll hopefully have a bit of luck and have a bit of fun. Thanks, guys.